hundreds of feet below the surface of our oceans, the conditions are too extreme for any normal human. But Will Truebridge says he can withstand the pressures at these depths. And unlike most freedivers, claims he can dive over 300 feet and back, completely unassisted, on a single breath of air. What's the deepest you've gone? 331 feet is the world record. Can his body really take on these extraordinary forces of nature and survive? The forces of nature shape our planet, but they also have the power to destroy. Mankind is at the mercy of these phenomena. But I'm on a mission to find people who claim they can harness the planet's deadliest forces. They're ordinary people with extraordinary powers. These are the freaks of nature. Oceans cover over two-thirds of our planet and can reach depths of nearly seven miles. Mankind may have evolved from creatures that emerged from the water millions of years ago, but our bodies are adapted to life above the waves. Underneath the surface, that's a whole different story. As you get deeper, our bodies face a battle with the forces of nature. The pressure of the water above you really begins to take its toll. At just 33 feet below the surface, your lungs are squeezed to half their size. You take that to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, and you could crush a nuclear submarine like a tin can. But there are people who have managed to find a way to overcome these incredibly powerful forces. I'll meet William Truebridge, who can, unassisted, dive deeper than anyone else on Earth. It's not so much about the records, so much as trying to aspire to this perfect dive where you uh, go to your absolute physiological limit. I'll also find out how free diving can kill you, even in the shallowest of water. They turned them over, the color from their eyes had faded, and they were bleeding from the mouth. Finally, I'll meet a man who's investigating the science of free diving. It's very easy, through a little bit too much physiological manipulation, to dive. To find out man's limit when it comes to deep water pressure, I've come to Long Island in the Bahamas. To witness a freediver pushing the human body to new depths, I'm heading to an extraordinary geological feature known as a blue hole. This 663-foot vertical chasm is the deepest of its kind anywhere on the planet. I'm at Dean's Blue Hole. It's one of the iconic freediving locations in the entire world. It also happens to be the training base for record-breaking freediver Will Truebridge. And what I want to find out is, how does his body handle the incredible forces at such great depth? Will has descended deeper than any human being, completely unaided and without the use of fins. <laughs> How you doing, Will? Welcome to the island. Why? Why free dive? Why go down on one breath of air? What's the attraction? It's a, it's a challenge. When I was a kid, my parents had this dream of sailing around the world and sold the house to buy a boat. We set sail from Spain. I was 18 months when we left and five years old when we arrived in New Zealand. From such an early age, the water was our world, our playground and our school, so it really is a part of me. What sets Will apart from other freedivers is the depth he can reach with no mechanical assistance. What's the deepest you've, you've gone? So far, 331 feet is the world record. That's amazing. Give me an idea of, of, of what you're facing down there every time you, you take a dive. The narcosis, the pressure, the buildup of carbon dioxide, the low oxygen, the lactic acid in your muscles. Free diving to 330 feet takes almost four minutes on a single breath. Will can go deeper than anyone else, thanks to his superhuman lung capacity. But Will knows the deadliest part of any unassisted free dive is the way back to the surface, when he must power his body back up. 
This exertion uses the one thing he's running out of, oxygen. The main danger is actually on the way back up, because uh, my oxygen is going to run out, out towards the end of the dive, and at the end, I'm, I'm close to the surface. The whole ascent is almost like an expression of your will to survive, to, to get back to the surface, to the element that, that you need to support your life. Will's agreed to show me the basics of free diving and find out how deep I can go on one breath of air. So just focus on, on staying relaxed, focus yeah. on taking that last deep breath in and um, take easy, long pulls down and make sure that you're equalizing your ears. You need to be flexible uh, in the body and also in the lungs. You need to train your breath hold, your ability to, to withstand low oxygen and high carbon dioxide. You need to train the efficiency of your movement so that you're very hydrodynamic under the water and you use very little oxygen to propel yourself. Will uses less oxygen to move and has trained the muscles of his diaphragm to expand his lung capacity to freakish proportions. <laughs> Just two reasons I can only dive to 15 feet, but Will can manage 330. I've tried it. Yeah. I haven't gotten anywhere near as far as you, but um, it is quite an experience, and I appreciate the opportunity. But I'd really love to see what you can do. It's now time for Will to push his skills to the max, using the extreme depth of Dean's Blue Hole. A target is being lowered 330 feet into pitch darkness. It'll take days for Will to prepare his lungs for this extreme depth. Out of just 5,000 freedivers around the world, over 100 are killed each year. If anyone knows about the dangers of diving down into the deep ocean, it's these guys. Triton submarines have been building machines that can take humans deeper and deeper for 20 years. I'm here to meet submarine pilot Pat Leahy, who's building a new machine capable of dealing with some extreme pressures. What kind of depth can your submersibles get to? Okay, well this particular model is called the Triton 3303. That's because it dives to 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters and carries three people. It also costs just over $3 million. Wow, okay, jeez. So I'm, I'm out of the running for right That's now. That's right. These subs have a hefty price tag for a reason. Building a machine that can withstand the crushing pressure of the deepest oceans is no easy task. Now, for example, at 3,300 feet or 1,000 meters, you're at uh, almost 1,500 PSI. So that's a tremendous amount of pressure. I mean, that's a little bit like this building standing on your, on your toe. Let's just say I'm in the submarine and we're, and we're down under the ocean. What happens to my body if I were to step out? Well, if you could get out, you'd be crushed. So basically, I step out of this when we're at, say, 3,000 feet, I become a beer can, basically. You'd be just munched. There'd be nothing left of you. I can't afford the $3 million price tag of the submarine to protect my body from the extreme pressure at the bottom of the ocean. But I'm on my way to meet a freediving researcher who's devised a unique way to simulate the forces that Will Truebridge will be battling in his potentially deadly 330-foot dive. I'm Tyler Harcott, and I'm in the Bahamas to witness freediver Will Truebridge attempt an unassisted dive of 330 feet. I want to find out how people can survive diving to such depths. So I'm going to meet up with Dr. Neil Pollack, and he's going to explain to me the science of free diving. Hey. So you are the guy to see, basically, when it comes to the effects of pressure on the body at depth, right? It's certainly what we do. Is there a way that you can actually show me? Oh, yes. Lead the way. This way? Get on board. OK, on board. I like this. Neil Pollack is the research director at the Divers Alert Network. 
He's going to show me what the body goes through when taking on the deep ocean in one of the world's most deadly sports. What does happen to the body the minute it goes under the water and as it goes deeper and deeper? For each 33 feet, you're gaining an atmosphere of pressure. So when we go down 33 feet, you have the volume of gas. When you go to 66 feet, it's three atmospheres of pressure, so the volume is down to a third. When you go down to four atmospheres, 99 feet, one quarter of the volume. Niels devised an experiment to demonstrate the pressure on your lungs at 330 feet. The same depth Will Truebridge is planning to dive. As the balloon descends towards the seabed, its size begins to decrease rapidly. It begins as the size of a melon. And in seconds, it's a third of its original size. By the time we run out of rope, it's no bigger than a tangerine. So our balloon is now at 330 feet below the sea. Right. What kind of pressure is it under right now? So it's at 11 atmospheres pressure, so that balloon will be 111th its original volume. If that was us, we would not be feeling very good. No, you'd certainly be under some strain. Yeah. Your lungs would be very, very small. Yeah. And, uh, that's what separates the people who can be the elite free divers from the rest. Most people couldn't tolerate that kind of discomfort. Will Truebridge's lungs arguably tolerate that pressure better than anyone? And he's about to attempt a 330 foot unassisted free dive. Will's been waiting for just the right tide and weather, and the conditions today could not be more perfect. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, after the first 100 feet, it's going to be completely pitch black. Will's about to defy the forces of nature. And I'm here with Dr. Pollock to witness it. So Neil, what are some of the key things we have to remember uh, as Will goes out? Well, right now, he's doing everything he can to relax, to prepare for the dive. So he's going to do everything he can to slow down his physiology. Gotta talk about safety and about the, the actual dangers that are involved with what Will's about to do, because no matter how many times you do it, it's there. Sure. The biggest risk is loss of consciousness. The last five minutes before it begins is a critical moment because if I have the right style of breathing and the right mental state going into it, then it's almost like it's already won before I've begun. During the breathe up preparation, it's really important for me to make sure that I don't hyperventilate. Hyperventilation reduces carbon dioxide, the gas that triggers our urge to breathe. Most freedivers hyperventilate to extend their breath hold time. The problem with hyperventilation is that that longer time is more time through which your oxygen levels are falling. And if your oxygen levels fall low enough, you can lose consciousness without ever reaching the point of having an urge to breathe. And so I try and breathe passively as if I was watching TV or reading a book. The last couple of breaths are deeper ones and I finish with a full inhale where I fill the lungs as much as possible. Will is about to attempt to reach 330 feet on one breath of air. He'll be under the water for nearly four minutes. I'm Tyler Harcott. I'm in the Bahamas to witness freediver Will Truebridge attempt to reach 330 feet on one breath of air. The potentially fatal consequences of pushing the human body to such depths are very real. Julie Richardson knows the dangers of freediving only too well after her sons fell prey to the dangers of the ocean off the coast of Miami. On uh, April 19th, 2008, the, the boys were heading out to spearfish uh, to celebrate Robert's 20th birthday. Robert, who had just finished taking a freedive course, wanted to test out his new skills and, and show his brother some of the things that he learned. They uh, threw out the line, the anchor line, so that they would have something to follow on the way down. And they were in about 90 feet of water. They went down together. When they got to the, the bottom of the line, it was still about 10 feet off the ocean floor, but Robert had continued on. And so David said, well, it's so close, I might as well, you know, go down and touch the sand. So he did. And then uh, they gave each other the thumbs up and uh, they headed back up to the surface. 
as Robert neared the surface, he turned around and looked down to see where David was. And he was about 15 feet or so beneath him, and he wasn't moving. So Robert immediately turned around, and he poked him, and he, he, um, he didn't move. He tried to rescue David, but a few feet from the surface, Robert also lost consciousness. They had both succumbed to shallow water blackout. Their friends suddenly realized the tragedy that was unfolding. All of a sudden, one of them saw them floating face down and sort of drifting away in the current. They turned them over. They were, you know, purple and um, unresponsive. And the, the light had, um, the color from their eyes had faded and they were bleeding from the mouth. At that point, I got the phone call. It was, a, it was a really hard phone call to take. I hung up the phone and I, uh, I thought that I was going to have a heart attack. It felt like someone had reached inside my chest and was squeezing it. And I, I just kept saying to myself, I can't have a heart attack. It's uh, very surreal to see a helicopter landing and offloading two of your sons. People were standing around like it was any other day, but it wasn't any other day. Those were my sons. The x-rays of their lungs, there was no difference in the look compared to victims of drowning. It was a... Uh, the worst day of my life, the most traumatic day of my life. But against all odds, the boys began to show signs of life. Wrapped up into all of that was the best day of my life, having them taken away nearly and given back to me. Of the 61 reported cases of shallow water blackout in 2008, Robert and David Richardson were two of only three survivors. Serious free dive accidents can occur in dives of under 100 feet. Will is about to attempt an unassisted free dive of 330 feet into the abyss. Will Truebridge is about to perform an unassisted free dive into this underwater chasm. Will must now descend 330 feet on one breath of air. What's going on right now down there as he's, as he's descending? As he's descending, his lungs are beginning to compress from the pressure, and so the first part of the descent, he'll have to be working. It's this exertion that saps his oxygen and begins to build up CO2 in his lungs. As he gets further down and the gas volume decreases, he'll become neutral and then negatively buoyant, so he'll begin to coast down very easily. Minute 30, so he should be reaching the bottom right about now, yeah? So he'll make his turn soon. Turn. Minute 50. Will is fighting his way back 330 feet to the surface after over two minutes underwater. And every single movement is using up the oxygen in his blood. So the safety diver has now gone down, and what he will do, he will meet our free diver as Will's coming up. The safety diver will come down, and he'll be able to maintain eye contact and see if there's any change in his status. But Will is still hidden in the pitch dark below the rim. By my watch, he's been down for about three minutes. He's getting so, very close. Yeah. He's got to be close. Our second so safety diver's gone down. certainly 
demonstrates the elite performance. He has the gifts that allow him to equalize quickly the motivation and the confidence to make it work, to hold his breath long enough. It is an art form, and not everybody can get anywhere close to it. I gotta admit, I, I was a little, I was on the edge there for a little bit, because it's, I've never seen anything like it. It is an art form. When you see him do this and it looks easy, you have to remember that it looks easy because he's special. Will's physiology, combined with years of extreme training, have taken him deeper, unassisted, than any other human in history. That's not so much about the depths or the, the records, so much as trying to aspire to this perfect dive where you uh, go to your absolute physiological limit. I'm impressed. I'm totally impressed. That was amazing. Congratulations. Thank you.